All right. Welcome to another little episode of the Nelson Ratings. Uh, I've seen War the, for the Planet of the Apes. Yes, yes. The third in this latest uh, redo trilogy uh, for the old classic from the 70s. There was a Mark Wahlberg movie a while back, but uh, everyone just forgets about that. This new uh, trilogy has been pretty good. The first movie, uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, uh, was just fantastic. Just uh, really great. Uh, rather haunting and sad as well. Uh, the second one, I can't say that it was as good as the original, and and it's not this third one wasn't as good as the original either. I just don't think they can top that one. But it was pretty good. Uh, the relationships between the humans and it, and it, it uh, continued the story that the uh, the virus uh, that plays a huge uh, role in the plot of the of this story. And then uh, we had this one. Uh, which seems to be the culmination of the uh, the war that breaks out between humans and apes, uh, even though most uh, didn't really want it. Uh, of course, the misunderstandings and whatnot that was left over from the last movie continues on into this one. And uh, but I gotta say, uh, a lot of people were saying it just wasn't any good. Uh, people, and then the it, no matter where you go, there's politics and everything. It's it's terrible, but it poisons everything, and there doesn't seem to be any way to get away with it. But uh, people on the right were saying this was an anti-Trump film, <laughs> and people on the left were upset because they thought it was racist. I mean, in specifically the Black Lives Matter character, D. Ray McKeeson said one of the characters was a was a mock mockery of him because uh this was the character called bad ape and he wears a blue vest just like d-ray does well i can pretty much confirm that this character had nothing to do with d-ray mckeeson because the character was very nice uh he was honorable and somewhat brave and uh, d-ray mckeeson is none of those things <laughs> as for what the right was worried about i'm not seeing it um, it, you know, I'm no fan of the left. Uh, I don't care for the PC cult and the SJWMS and all that stuff. It is there. It does happen. And, uh, a good example is one of the, uh, Doctor Who episodes I reviewed where the doctor literally turns to the camera and gives you a lecture about capitalism in case you didn't get it from the plot, which was all about how capitalism is bad. Uh, that sort of thing. There's none of that in here. Uh, there is a wall. That's supposed to the people think, oh, that's to attack Trump. But there's no way you can make the analogy that uh, they were trying to keep immigrants out. <laughs> and so uh, there was really, so I'm not seeing it. The guy that's supposed to be Trump, uh, there's nothing Trump about him. Um, so uh, and then, of course, the analogy of race relations. Well, that goes all the way. To the original uh, uh, Planet of the Apes movies, and maybe people that are oppressed, and uh, and then of course the misunderstandings, and then there's good and bad in both. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, so, I, but if they, if you're tired of that story over and over, yeah, I guess. But but this is a, a fantasy and a science fiction <laughs> film, and uh, the, certainly the allegories are there. But that's not really beating you over the head with it. Uh, this was a really great film. And in some, I have to watch them all three over again. But I'm going to think that this one might be top the second one. Uh, this one was pretty good. Uh, there's some holes in it. Uh, I don't want to give away too much of the plot. But, boy, when you're going into battle, make sure you uh, keep your fuel tanks <laughs> protected. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty stupid. Uh, but, uh, well, I guess you could say they were caught off guard. But nevertheless, um, so it, it completes the story. It completes Caesar's story, as which you could expect it to be. Uh, he's the leader. He's the Moses of the apes. And it, it certainly completes that. And um, also the story of the virus, which you could only insinuate that the virus explains why humanity loses its ability to speak and becomes more animal-like, whereas the apes uh, evolve and become more intelligent. And of course, it does exactly that, and it completes the story of the virus as well. And so you know exactly why this happened. So there's this completes the trilogy, and I suppose I've heard tell that this is it. They're moving away from it. They're not going to do another one. But then again, maybe they will. Uh, maybe a different crew would take over. 
because it does leave it open. They did mention a spaceship flying to Mars at the end of the first one, so these astronauts are out there, and Taylor could be on board to come back. Plus, they introduced Nova. She's a little girl in this one, but by the time Taylor gets back from cryo sleep or whatever, uh, she might be an adult, and that story could be retold, but in a due way and all that. Um, and so I'm wondering if the virus could also explain those crazy, bald, weird, mutated people who lived underground but had, you know, uh, mental powers of illusion and mind reading. <laughs> I mean, what the hell, you know? Maybe they could do that. I don't know that the virus keeps mutating and different things happens to different people. So that could be something that could be explored but hopefully handled well because uh, if they can't do it well, then let's just call this one the end because uh, pretty good. So five stars for War uh, for the Planet of the Apes. Uh, and maybe it was the lowered expectations because I went in thinking, nah, it's just going to be some preachy thing and all that. No, no. It was a beautiful, haunting film. Uh, of course, it couldn't measure up to the first one, but so what? Uh, it, 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 it wowed me, so that's why I'm giving it five stars out of five. And that's the Nelson Ratings for War for the Planet of the And that was the Nelson Ratings. Commentary from me, Mr. Nelson. The views and opinions expressed in the Nelson ratings do not necessarily reflect those held by Radio Misfits or any other entity that Mr. Nelson may or may not be involved with. So any complaints or comments should be sent to at Mr. Nelson on Twitter, where they'll be promptly ignored and or blocked.